and welcome to this special behind the scenes video looking at how we make more methods. I'm a research support librarian and as the name suggests I support research across the University of Cambridge and a big part of that is teaching researchers how to use various tools and skills so they can get stuff done as quickly and as efficiently as possible also while conforming to any particular funding requirements and other things that they need to do. Unfortunately, at the moment, there is only one of me in my department, so I wanted to create a set of resources that could supplement what I do and that people could sort of dip in and out of as and when they needed to, especially if they couldn't make an in-person teaching session with me. So I thought the best kind of resources for this would be YouTube videos. Another part of why I wanted to do this is I wanted to support my library colleagues across the university. There's a really mixed range of librarians and libraries across Cambridge, some of which have rather large teams and they do lots of teaching, and some of which are only one or two people and they don't always have the time or the facilities to be able to do as much training as I would, for example. So I wanted to create some resources that they could use and they could share with their various user groups as well. more people are using YouTube to find things like how-to guides or unboxing videos so they can find out more about a product or a particular thing that they might want to invest in. And I felt that YouTube was the best format for what I wanted to achieve. So it's an easy format to use, it's accessible to all, you can find it pretty much through any browser, it's free to use and there are lots of extra options for uploads, for accessibility, so things like subtitles. And apart from anything else, you've become a part of the wider YouTube educational community. What you may have noticed, we use a lot of GIFs and a lot of pictures. And apart from anything else, it's kind of part of the YouTube established style. It's part of how the community communicates things effectively. Um, so I wanted to keep things light, fun and amusing. Learning skills doesn't have to be serious or really dull. And having a few gifts just to lighten things up a bit hopefully will make the viewing process just that little bit more fun. I did not know how to make videos before starting this project so I did go on a one-day course with the University of Cambridge's Information Services which was co-run by them and also colleagues from across the university but that was a really good introduction, had a look at some kit, had a look at how to edit but it was very very quick so I got a lot of inspiration from existing content on YouTube like Emily Gressley's Brain Scoop, which is utterly fantastic, I highly recommend it, and the PBS channel's Idea Channel. We basically worked it out as we went, and I was also helped hugely by Ryan in the credits, um, because he came in and helped me with the filming, and, but he is also self-taught through the various communications work he's done throughout the university. So we did make up a lot of it as we went along, and of course, as with most of these sorts of things, it didn't always go quite to plan. Hello and welcome to the first 23 Research Things video, where I will tell you a bit more how, about how we learn research, film, three, I've got to start again, sharing, as, as, oh my god! I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> this is what I have happens when I'm on script. Ooh, well, this is my chance to do a little bit of filming now, and I'm going to do it on my phone. So I am currently using just a simple Samsung Android phone. I have used um, iPhones in the past as well for filming things. But, but as, as you can see, it's the man behind the camera, Ryan. Hello. <laughs> so this is essentially our setup. We have got an SLR machine thing there. So it's an EOS 70D Canon. So here's our camera. Fairly DSLR. standard. Yeah. You can see everything through a little screen in the back. Fantastic. And we've got a Sennheiser shotgun mic on the top, mm -hmm. which just it picks up better quality audio than the camera's own inbuilt microphone. And you can do all sorts with these cameras. You can take stills, you can take video. Um, you can tweak light and aperture and all the rest of it if you want to get really techy. Mm -hmm. But it's really good to just plonk on a tripod and Fantastic. shoot away. 
Now our tripod, speaking of, is a bit of a hodgepodge of two different things. So we've got a standard um, tripod here that we just bought off of Amazon, but because we had a little tiny bit of extra money to spend, we decided to get an auto cue tripod extension thing that we got again from Amazon. Now what this does is it gives you a little bit of a, a section to, with some glass in it so you can actually put an iPad. This is an iPad. This is one we already had. And as you can see, through the glass, it reflects the script. Now we weren't originally going to script our videos, but we decided it'd be a good idea because apart from anything else, it makes the transcript part of it much easier. And so that is the view that I see from across the room. And you can have the speed faster, slower, font larger, different colors, whatever you want. And this is just using an app that we downloaded from the Apple store. This is a paid for version, um, just so we could get the reverse text that we needed to reflect on the glass, but you can also use a free version and just have the iPod pro iPad propped up on something just within your eye line. We mentioned cameras and microphones. We also have this lovely H4n. This is our primary audio recorder. It falls over all the time <laughs> on its tiny little tripod, but this has been the thing that we've used to pick up most of the audio. So now we're up in the office and we've done our filming, we need to edit it. And this is the software we're using. It's called Adobe Premiere Pro and it's part of the Adobe Creative Cloud package which you can get through the University Information Services if you're at Cambridge. It's basically like Photoshop for video. So you can click and drag any video file from your computer into a Premiere Pro project. You can tweak the audio and sync it up. You can add in your images and then when you've got something there you can tweak its position, move it around, you can tweak the colour, do all the usual stuff. Wow, the future of more methods. I want to carry on making videos, I've really enjoyed it and I hope that you guys have really enjoyed watching them as well. I'd really like to collaborate with colleagues and researchers from around the university as well on new tools. A lot of the stuff we've made videos on already was stuff that I knew about, but of course I don't know everything and there's a lot of stuff you may be, might be using that you find really, really helpful that we haven't covered. I would also like to introduce an interview series called More Mentions, where we talk to people from around the university about the kind of work that they're doing. So if you'd be interested in being a part of that, get in touch and let me know. That would be awesome. I hope you enjoyed that behind the scenes look at how we make more methods. If you'd like to be involved in future More Methods episodes, get in touch. And if you just want to follow along and see what new stuff we do, subscribe. And until next time, bye.